Broadway.com. What's up, guys? It's another week here at the Long Acre Theater doing first date. We are really settling in to our jobs and our roles and our routines, and we are having a blast. Um, it's a, another two show day, and I'm going to kind of take you around today. I'm going to introduce you to some people that work in the theater. I'm going to do my interview with Kate Lowprest. And, um, yeah, you'll get to see a lot of things. Uh, enjoy. Okay, so you can hear the dance party going on outside, so Zach's out there signing. Um, but it's in between shows on a Saturday, and I wanted to introduce you to one of our doormen. This is Regan, and uh, he, he does the doorman duties during the day. How long have you worked for the Schubert organization? Uh, ten and a half years. Ten and a half years, okay. And have you been doing other things before that? What did you do before that? I was a theatrical production manager. Okay. And now, and simultaneously, you're an artist. So these are your um, your artwork pieces behind you. Now. These are the portals. These are the what? I call them the portals. The, okay. You know, a lot of the guy, a lot of the doormen have signed posters. Yes. From the cast. Yes. I, I want the thing that the cast is actually walking under. Okay. All the time. So, so he does these wire art things. Yeah. Talk about which show, which show is this well, one? This is Mike Tyson's Undisputed Truth. Okay, they're all shows that have been in the theater, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like on this one, uh, these are three heavyweight championship belts. Okay. Which I didn't know that they did a different one for each champ. And I didn't either. Until I started the research on it. Yeah. And, We've got uh, the performers. Up there was the performers. That was uh -huh. Henry Winkler's show. That, that was, was the most class. recent one, right before us. That's right. Yeah. Um, and this one is uh, Magic, Magic Bird. Bird. Well, there's a story of Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Mm -hmm. And on this one, there's the same number of stars as there are games uh, games in an NBA season. Oh, wow. So, uh, but that includes big star clubs. And the little stars. Okay, the cool. Stars this is Chinglish. Chinglish, uh, okay. And this up here actually says Chinglish in Chinese. In Chinese? Oh, great. Uh, I had to get the cast to help me to do that. Yeah, to approve it. Yeah, we all know what happens when you don't know what symbols mean, oh, right? Yeah. Let's go inside and we'll talk about the, uh, well, we'll talk about ours. So you come through our door and right about here is our first date one. Yeah, so that the actors walk underneath it mm -hmm. every time they come in. So you can see Zach <laughs> saying hi <laughs> and well, me saying no. <laughs> well, yeah, when I first, when I first did it, all I knew was the title of the show. Right. But to me, first date was all about hearts connected with barbed wire. So that, <laughs> that's why I went with it. Perfect. And then uh, the guy is all happy to be there. Uh -huh. And she's, oh, no, no, no. She's not so sure, which yeah. is the definite uh, gist of our show. Well, yeah, and that was a guess. And when the author came in and was asking me that, uh, I said, oh, well, that's why you go. And he goes, well, that's perfect. How'd you know? And I go, personal experience. <laughs> Hi guys, so we're on our next Hi. interview with Miss Kate Lowprist, and uh, we're here in between <laughs> shows, and I'm not eating this time, but Kate is drinking kombucha, which is kind of the grossest thing, in my opinion, but she loves it. I have a healthy immune system. <laughs> She's really working on her enzymes. I'm, I'm feeling really, <laughs> I'm feeling the flow. <laughs> Perfect. Gross. So we're in her dressing room, which looks uh, very similar to most of the other ones, but mm -hmm. it's really cute and we'll maybe give you a little tour. It's girly. Ones. It's girly. Got um, it all at TJ Maxx. Uh, how are you, Kate? I'm great. Yeah? Great. I love two show days. So we're going to have our questions from Twitter. Okay. Johnny Full of Glee says, what's the biggest change that's been made since previews started? And I thought that was an appropriate question for you. That's a great question. You are the biggest change that been made since previous yeah. started. Um, so um, in coming into the role, um, I was hired to play uh, Allison, which I'm still playing, and Google Girl, which I am still being the voice of. But voice of yes. yes. Google used to have a whole production number. If you came early on in previews, yes. you probably saw it for a week or two. We did with two. Did we do two weeks? Yeah. I don't remember. My mom was asking. And I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't even know. Yeah. Um, but in the second week, Google was cut from the show. Um, it was a new character to the, the show and the script anyway. They yeah. didn't have it out of town in Seattle. And I knew that it was going to be hard for them. You know, we had iPads. It was it a was very, amazing. like, techie, high thing. And she had this crazy Katy Perry costume with, mm -hmm. like, rainbow... Uh, 
what, what like rainbow suit, Miley Cyrus booty, booty shorts, shorts and a push up bra and a sparkly bustier. I looked like Katy Perry. They all saw your birthday last week. Yes. Um, so Mike Rose says, "Hi, Kate. Hi. I would have guessed you were in your mid twenties." Hey. Thanks, Mike. Any difficult costume or makeup changes between your three roles? In this show? Yeah. Uh, no. no. I have never been in a show where I don't have to change costumes <sighs> until this one, and I am so But you used happy. to have to wear your Google costume underneath it. Yes, Go I downstairs, did. unzip it, or unzip it on stage, we did a couple mm -hmm. times. Somebody asked, Natalie Grillo, Grillo, Gri maybe, hey, or Grillo, hey. says, odd question for Kate Lopress. Uh -oh. Do you have a mirror on stage? Because every time you put your hair back into place, it's perfect. That is, I actually wonder about that. I have a ritual that right before I go on stage, I look at myself in the mirror and I say, bye face, see you in 96 minutes, because <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen. We have no mirrors. No. no. But you have Bryce. You could, he could give you some feedback. Bryce is not help. <laughs> well, because Christopher gives Sarah advice. Yes. With the headband. He says, right side, left side. He tells her, like, Yeah, no. I, for Bryce, I get, like I said, married man. It's fine. He's not gonna know it. It's fine. Is that, I was got that really friend? excited about a week ago <laughs> before we went on uh, for Allison, and I like shoved my hair a different way. I mean, if your hair and it like ended that. up like it literally ended up like this, <laughs> and I don't, I didn't know. So I spent, I did this, and I was doing She's like this, trying to get it out, and, and I couldn't fix it. He and finally moved it out of her face, and she went. Thank you. In the, like, in the middle of the you. song, which I thought was so cute. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. She just, Bailey Ford, 2016. Hey, she's, a, she's a big fan. Hey. She says, uh, what's your favorite Schmackery's cookie? You want to know what? Um, I am um, gluten aware. Ah. I, I would not know this. I'm gluten, I'm gluten aware, only because it makes my body feel better. Um, I don't know if you know anything about gluten, Krista. I, I really know some things about gluten. It's harder for your body to digest, and that's yes. what keeps you full. Um, but sometimes it's just harder for your body to move it along, and your body uses a lot of energy trying yeah. to digest it. And I'd rather keep my energy uh -huh. and do my show yeah. and whatever I needed to do, so I'm gluten aware. Um, however, when it comes to baked goods and sweets, I don't care. Yeah. Bring it on. Um, doesn't Schmackery's have a the cookie? Best. The bacon one. Oh, that's my favorite one. The bacon, the maple bacon one. <laughs> But Feel free to send me a maple bacon cookie. Yeah. Um, Anybody want to send us some schmacks? That's what I, I won't like. say no. Yeah. Um, but there was some like chocolate chip with sea salt kind of sort yeah. of thing. And yeah. I'm a big salt dark salt. chocolate with sea salt fan. Mm -hmm. Like I forget who makes it, like lint or something. They make a bar of it. Yeah. It does not last very long. Yeah. In yeah. The fridge. Yeah. Oh, I just want to take a second to say uh, we had a couple fans that um, brought that actually brought me gifts for my birthday. There Aww. was a Jane and Krista. Actually, I think Krista was here today. She was. She, she brought me yes. a gift. She and got me a picture. It's really, really sweet. So yeah. thank you, girls, if you're watching, for supporting our show and being so kind to bring. See you later. Bye. Drink kombucha. <laughs> so this is um, this is our set. Our set's very unique because it doesn't. Uh, we just have one. So uh, and we don't. It has to move at the end of the show. It, it spreads away. So we have all of this backstage area that can't be used for anything. You can see it's very um, kind of eclectic and there's books lining the bottom of the, of the chairs. And it's, um, it's supposed to kind of represent New York in all of its phases. The, the, the ground is actually uh, an abstract map of the High Line, which is a, a park uh, here in New York that's like an above ground railroad that was turned into a park. And this is a reclaimed iron piece that he got from a salvage area. Like, he just got very creative with things that were very New York and very um, specific to uh, our city because that's part of the show. Um, we've got, so here's the, the fun stuff. This is the tables. And you can see that the backs are cut out. And this is where we slip all of our props and stuff. There's nothing in there right now because we're in between shows. This is our house. Isn't it beautiful? Such an exciting view. 1,100 people every day. It's one of the smaller houses and normally there's plays in here so we're really happy to be a musical here because it's really intimate and we can really reach the audience and we like that. <clears throat> we're showing somebody else eating for a change instead of just me <laughs> eating on the block for 11 straight minutes. Um, Zach, I want to talk about two very important things. Which are? Uh, what the mic the new microphones. Yeah. And the cronut. <laughs> <laughs>
We well, have two very important things to discuss. <laughs> two very important things. Well, first of all, we are now wearing... Between the Chris two of us. and I are wearing two microphones apiece. Four microphones, you guys, between the two of us. So, yeah. Um, so, tell us why we're wearing four mics between the two of us. Well, it's not my fault. It just happened no. to happen. Happened to happen. It just happened to happen. On me, which was my mic. I love a freak out and got all weird and staticky and crazy. Right at the beginning of the show. Right at the beginning of the show. I was doing um, first impressions, I think. Uh huh. And, um, There's no escape route, so neither of no. us have any logical reason to leave the stage. We never leave the stage. Well, I leave the stage one time. When but I it's, like the it's like 60 minutes into yeah, the show. It's well into the show. So, um, yeah, so then they thought, well, we need to have an insurance policy, and that is to wear... But tell us, about what ha tell us about what well, happened. Which, by the way, I heard... Well, no, it just... So, so okay, Blake I'll tell you what happens. So we are about to freeze. We're going into a freeze, and... Here, I'm going to turn this around. And then Blake comes uh, right before the freeze and says... Zach, you need to leave. Zach, you need to go downstairs right now. Yeah. So it was gonna freak me out a little bit. I was yeah. like, "What the hell is going on?" Because I can't get very, us both in here. Very unorthodox. Here, I'll, I'll sit up. <laughs> no, I'll do that. Okay. So, um, so then Zach leaves, and he's my only scene partner. He's literally the only person yeah. in the whole show that I'm allowed to talk to. Well, that's not true. You can talk to the waiter. A little right. Bit. Well, what? That's so. <laughs> so the freeze is about to end, and the song's ending, and I'm going, "Oh my god, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do." No. And um, he is not there, and the lights don't really come back on because we're not really sure what to do. So then Blake comes over to me and starts talking to me, and he's like, "How's your date?" going and we're just ad-libbing stupid stuff yeah. but they didn't really have your mics on right or no our marks marks weren't really on and the lights weren't really on yeah. so we didn't know what we were supposed to do so finally i mean it had stop. to have been 45 seconds of just, just dead, dead time. and the audience is like silent just on bated breath no. and i then all of a sudden i hear zach bum, 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 yeah. bum, just running up the, stairs, up the stairs tearing up the stairs sits down he's like sweaty he's like looks like he's seen a ghost and then he says Sorry, sometimes when I get really nervous, I get diarrhea. <laughs> Which kill? <laughs> Which kill? <laughs> I don't know. You had to. I you gotta mean, say something. I mean, the audience knew. Well, no, actually, but some that's of them the didn't thing. know. Some, some so didn't afterwards, know I said, Zach, you, you're gonna have to like do some clarification because they're they don't know why you went downstairs. They're gonna think that you actually had diarrhea and left in the middle of the scene. No, I think some people thought. I, I think a lot of people actually knew that something was up. Yeah, but they didn't know what was up, and what could be up is that no. you had explosive diarrhea in the middle of the show. So the other thing is about the cronut. Yeah. Um, Zach and I had our first cronut yesterday, and we are putting it out into the world. We want more cronuts. Well, to be fair, I had my first cronut. Yeah, and, and I... And you came and poached it, a bite. It, but it was the perfect timing. I happened to be next door in my dressing room, and I happened to walk inside, and he happened to be eating it. And yeah. I... We happened to like each other enough that he offered me a bite. Talk Actually, no, I asked for a bite, but you gave it to me. No, I was absolutely, I was gonna give you a bite anyway. Um, and here's the thing, people at home. I don't know <clears throat> that every cronut is the same. I don't know what the flavor selection is. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know which one I got. I got you got coconut. Friends. Oh, it was coconut. Yep. It was coconut. I found that's, out. That's right. It was coconut. Because we couldn't identify it. But if every cronut, a crow cronut. <laughs> I can't vouch for every other flavor, but I will tell you that that coconut cronut, that co cronut, the co cronut, was like you guys. Like if angels, we should be publicizing sex it. And gave birth to a pastry <laughs> on high in the heavens. That would be what it was. I, I, it think, was I think what you just said is highly inappropriate, but completely accurate. It's not. It's the best. I it it changed my life, you guys. It changed my life. Changed I haven't thought about life. anything else for the I, past I, I, 24 hours way, and i am not i'm not a pastry i'm not a pa i'm not a big pastry guy nor am i somebody to just give credit where credit is uh, of course or I like don't jump on hype? Bandwagons. yeah no i don't do any of that Zach everybody's talking about this corona thing i make bad <laughs> everybody's talking about these cronuts i'm like yeah. it's ridiculous can't be worth it totally so worth, worth it, it. So worth it. Thank God his friends waited in the three hour line for us. I know. Because I don't know if I'm ever going to get girls. one ever Appreciate again. That. Yeah, shout him out. Um, it was one of the most incredible experiences of my entire life. Thank you. So that's what we got for you for the fifth episode of Kiss and Tell. I'm telling you guys, these weeks are flying by. I'm not even sure if we have enough time on these episodes for me to show you all the amazing things that we have going on here. So I'm just trying to plan accordingly. 
Um, I hope you're enjoying. I've gotten a lot of feedback, a lot of tweets, a lot of people at the stage door saying that they like it, so thank you for that. And if you have any things that you want to see or questions or specific things that you want to know about, let me know. Tweet me at um, Krista Rodriguez, uh, hashtag kiss and tell. And um, we're going to do some exciting things next week that I'm still kind of formulating. And uh, that's it.